Hi guys, welcome back to Alexander's Family Butchers. Today we're going to show you a wee bit more in depth, breaking down a deer. This deer's got a wee bit more cover than the first deer we did, so this should be really nice. Um, the customer just wants it made into burgers, pies and sausages. So we'll do the first video, part one, and we'll just show you how we break it down. And then we'll do the second video, and we'll show you us making the pies, the burgers and the sausages. And that's a complete start to finish. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start by taking the back straps off. If this was a beef carcass, these muscles here would be the sirloin and ribeye. So we're going to start by taking them off. And to do that, we're going to start at the top. And we're going to run our knife along this spine. The spine bone protrudes all the way down the animal. We're just going to keep our knife tight into the bone. And just run the tip of our knife all the way down both sides. Keeping it nice and tight into the bone. You can hear the knife rattle off the bone, that's me keeping it nice and tight. And then at the very bottom, where your legs stop, you'll feel the joint in there. We'll just put our knife in, both sides. And we'll just, at this point, you can do it two ways, you can either take the shoulder off first, and then take your fillet off, or you can keep it on. So today we'll take our shoulder off. So if you just put your fingers in, you'll see a natural seam at your shoulder blade. And we'll just peel that away. And that just comes away in one large lump, your whole shoulder, like that. And we'll bone that out, and that will make all our sausages. From there, your fillet muscle runs about an inch and a half to two inches all the way across. So we'll just put our knife in, draw a straight line, so we get to the end and from there we're going to take this flank off so we'll just get our knife the tip of our knife and we're going to run it along the rib cage to get rid of the flank now there's like i said there's quite a good bit of cover on this so it's a wee bit easier to bone out usually with venison there's no much covering around about the rib cage so it's sometimes it's very hard to get a nice clean cut off it but there's a good bit of cover, these will make fantastic burgers and sausages or the trim we get for this. So, I'm just working my knife along, taking my time. Remember guys, if you're trying this out for yourself, there's no rush. Just practice makes perfect, okay? Um, even though I've been butchering for years, I still love watching videos on YouTube um, and, and anybody else that, that does them. Just seeing the way different butchers break down animals, I think it's a brilliant skill to have. And whether it's just for your own use or whether you want to get into the trade, take your time. That's my advice. There's no rush. And once you get it mastered, you never look back. So that's for belly. I don't know if you can see, if I can tilt it up, you can see the rib cage exposed there. We've taken that whole flank off. Now we're going to take the fillet off. And to do that, again, we're just going to use the tip of our knife. And we're going to go in at an angle and run it along the rib cage. Keeping it tight into the bone. There we go, you can start to see that coming away now. And once we get to here, there's some soft bones. And we'll just go again, keeping your knife tight in against that. You'll see it better once I take this off a bit. You'll see that we've managed to keep our knife tight in against the bones. So minimum waste, because the fillets are the creme de la creme. You don't want any waste on these at all. There we go, and that's just coming off nicely, like so. And there we have a whole fillet, and we'll get that trimmed up, as I say. As you can see now, you're starting to see all the bones exposed. And we'll just repeat the process on the other side. We'll turn it on its side a wee bit for this. We'll do it slightly different, but in theory just exactly the same. We'll run along, we're going to take our shoulder off. This is where it was shot, so there's quite a bit of damage in here, so that'll take quite a wee bit of trimming. And then once our shoulder's off, we'll get rid of this flank. We'll do it the opposite way this time. We'll move out the way. Again, just with the tip of your knife, we'll try and avoid all this kind of heavy blood clot down here where the animal was shot. 
Put my knife along. See your ribs start to curve in like that, these soft bones. Okay, just tip of the knife, fall in the bones, and you'll not go wrong. Until you get to the bottom couple, and like I say, we're trying to avoid as much of that blood as we can. And now we'll take the fillet off. These wee soft bones in the back there, we'll get the tip of our knife in. And I'm working away the same way as we did the other side, just the tip of your knife in tight to release this fillet, leaving as much of the meat on it as possible. Again, another fillet ready for trimming up. And that's the other side of the animal. For the neck, move that out a wee bit if you can see that better. The neck, again quite a wee bit of damage round about here so we'll not be too pernickety with that. We'll just roughly go round about the neck bones, taking as much meat as we possibly can off without digging into this blood clot and damage where it was killed. Just some trim there, flip it over. Do the same on this side, roughly in about those neck bones. No paying too much attention to it. There we go. And that's your whole neck, all the way down to your legs. You've got two wee inside fillets in here. You can see that very well along here. So we're going to take them out. Again, there's a wee bit more cover on this so we'll get a wee bit more of the fillet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it all the way up the leg as your fillet just sits inside here again just putting your knife hard to the bone and that keeps that fillet completely whole same again with the other side, we'll run it all the way up to the inside of the leg. And just work our way along the bone. Taking that out. Now these videos are only designed to be a tutorial on how to butcher, but you can pick up some tips um, if you would like to do more kind of in-depth of how you butcher then please comment on the video. Um, if you like what you see, follow us on YouTube, Alexander's Family Butchers. If you like the look of what you see and what you hear, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Click onto our website, onlinebutcherscotland.com. Now we've taken the fillets out, we're going to break the legs. And to do that, we're just going to find the join right there. Put the knife through. Hear that just snap, a natural joint in there, and there we go. That's for legs, and that's your whole carcass, ribs and neck. We'll get rid of that, and this leaves our jiggets. Now, the customers don't want any rolled jigget or anything, so we're just going to literally bone it out completely, and we'll do it all for burgers, pies, and sausages. So we're going to start by taking the hip bones out, the pelvis. There's a wee ball socket in there. You just keep your knife tight to it, you'll get in no problem. Bring your knife along that pelvic bone there to the end. And there's a wee bit that sticks out, the round about out, round about it, should we say. And just follow the knife all the way down. Also guys, if you're looking for any videos that you would like to see, me show you, um, whether it be breaking down a chicken or how to make some casseroles and stocks or whatever, then please comment below. There we go, that's all our bones out. Again, a wee bit rough and ready, but you know, it's just for the purposes of boning it out. We're not rolling any meats or getting steaks off this. 
way you split the legs we'll always cut that out put that in the bin and then we'll start boning my legs out to do that we'll just follow there's a big bone here one that goes along to this ball socket and that's it two bones joined together go along on that one and because we're not rolling it we're just splitting it all the way down the middle we're not tunnel boning it if you were rolling it you would tunnel bone it out so that you can roll the meat up nice or if you were staking it you would seam your joints out but this is just getting completely broken down for burgers pies and sausages round that kneecap I should bones there. Now this is a complete boned leg. Same on the other side. Down that bone. Round the back the kneecap so I managed to catch the kneecap there and keep it on so we'll take it out there you go, that's the kneecap off and that's it guys, that is what whole deer boned and ready to be cut up. So what we'll do is we've got all the hawk meat, right? So your shank off your jigget at the back of the animal, we'll cut it up for trim. We'll try and keep the leaner stuff for burgers. And the kind of rougher stuff for pies and sausages. So anything off the jigget, we'll try and keep for burgers. And then off the shoulders and the flanks we will keep for pies and sausages because it gives it that wee bit more fat. Okay, here's my other leg. So again that hawk meat, we'll cut it off and we'll use that for pies and sausages. And the rest of the leg will go to burgers. Nice and lean. There we go. So that's where jig gets cut up. We've got a wee pile for sausages, but we'll add to that. So any bits of fat, perfect. So here's your two inside fillets. We'll get them trimmed up now. There's a whole fillet, so. Be careful when you're trimming, there's not much to them, so I'll just try and lay a wee bit of fat on it. That's up to the customer how they want to cook this up. There you go, that's not too bad. Let's say just leaving a wee bit of covering on it, depending on how the customer wants to cook it. They might like it with a wee bit of fat, they might not. Again, another inside fillet. Get that big fat off. You chain it the side of it. That one's not too bad. So there's your two inside fillets. Or your fatty trim goes for your sausages and pies. And this stuff here is the stuff we took off the neck. Again, straight into pies and sausages, and same with your flank. We'll just chop it up. If the customer, if the customer had wanted like mince and stew off it, again we would break it down slightly different. Inside your net, you've got this great big yellow connective tissue. Cut that out. Hey, 
I just these were two shoulders, which we'll get to in a second. First, we're going to trim off the beautiful fillets. So, so do so. We'll get rid of this top piece here. Normally, you can just grab it, there you go, and pull a layer off. And that gets rid of the kind of fatty stuff. And that leaves you with this nice silver skin underneath, which we want to take off. So just gently, again, tip your knife in, and then underneath it, tilt your knife up the way so you're no digging into the fillet. Drag it along. When you get down to the bottom, there'll be another wee seam for this wee muscle here. So just take it off, because it's no part of the fillet. So you bit tough, it's part of the chain, which is that rough stuff underneath, which we'll see in a second. If we flip it over, yeah, it's going to be back kind of rough and ready. So we'll put that into trim. Should we fill it up? Rid of a wee bit of chain that's left here and here. Spread it off a wee bit down the bottom and up the top. And we'll portion it into three and what we'll do is we'll butterfly them open so just flat on your board your knife in and we'll just butterfly them open so it'll look like lovely wee steaks like that beautiful now we will get six fillets off the animal again there's another one beautiful lovely wee frying steaks absolutely gorgeous just in and out of the pan no cooking at all and the last one, that's the biggest one. Absolutely beautiful. You can see that glistening in the camera there. That'll be absolutely amazing. On to our second fillet. So we'll start underneath this time. We'll take the chain off. Bring your knife along that rough bit of the side. Scrape it off. Keep it on the other side. Turn it over. Pull. Rid of the fat to expose the silver skin and same again, knife underneath and you just get your knife and pull up to the top and that skin should just literally glide off. That's like down at the bottom, catching that wee bit of chain. And just a wee bit left on the side, screw that off. And that's us. Again into three and butterfly open again beautiful steaks ideal for frying so we'll set them to the side look at them again can of help me show you absolutely beautiful we'll set them to the side our pile is getting bigger for what sausage and now we're on to the shoulders so shoulders quite a good mixture of fat and lean so we'll get these boned out quickly and just chop them up for burgers and sausages so we'll start by taking the shank off like i say guys these aren't the videos for showing you how to do it as much but rather than just watching showing how we break it down for customers individual needs the next year we do might not be broken down just as easy as this and then we're going to take the shoulder blade off so we break that joint in there shoulder blade runs down here i'm going to get a knife in at the back follow all the way down the side of the blade and then get our knife in tip of our knife and go over the top of the blade exposing the bone you can see that now, I lift it up like you see, that's a shoulder blade. Down the other side, and then just work your knife round about it, removing the meat from the bone until it's completely free. There's a wee ridge at the back, just gently work your knife again. If you're doing this for your own purposes and you're learning, just take your time, just follow the bone with the tip of your knife. And you know, go wrong. Wait, that's the shoulder blade there. All done. And that just leaves the bone in here. We'll follow the knife along onto that ball joint where we took our blade off. 
a bit like the leg bone, same idea. Like I say, rough and ready. That's our shoulder bones. And all of this just gets chopped up for pies and sausages. Apologise if this video is a wee bit shaky. To get the camera angle, we've got it balanced up in a couple of pails. Now, this shoulder here is pretty much blown to bits. Look, that's where it's been shot. It's smashed the shoulder blade, so we want to avoid that at all costs. We don't want any bone fragments. So, we'll take the shank off. There's no damage round about it. On the side. We'll go along the bone and we'll see how far we get before we start hitting any bone fragments. So, yeah, I'm not even going to touch that. It's smashed right in here as well on the shoulder, so that is dead to me, guys. That is dead meat. Everyone in there is smashed. So, in a nutshell, that's us split down. So, I'll pause the video. And once I get, I'll get rid of the bones, tidy up the table, and I'll show you what we've got. Right, guys, that's us back again. We've got a wee square up. So just to recap, we've got that whole carcass all broken down. The customer just wants it into pies, burgers, and sausages. So we're done a quick breakdown. But as you can see, here's your fillets. They were taken out, trimmed up, and portioned out. So we've got six nice portions and a couple of long inside fillets. They look absolutely delicious. Here we've got all our breakdown, we've got a nice pail to make burgers with, that's a wee bit more lean, and a wee bit of the fattier trim to make sausages and pies with. So I'm going to start portioning these out into the appropriate recipe sizes, and we'll start making the burgers first, and then we'll do the pies and sausages, and we'll let you see the whole process. Alright, so hold on to your hats. Right, so here we are, we've got it all portioned out, so... We've added some beef fat to our burgers just to get a wee bit more flavour and make it nice and moist. So we're going for a 4 kilo batch of steak burgers. We've got £5 of the trim set aside and we're going to make our sausages with them. And the rest of the trim, again, added a wee bit more fat to it and we're going to make some lovely venison pies with that. So we're going to start with the burgers first and we'll start putting them through the machine. This is us going to start with burgers, we're going to put them through the grinder. There we go. Now we'll add our seasoning. There we go, we've added our season, which is just a traditional burger seasoning. And we've also added a nice big, big handful of mixed herbs and spices just to give it a wee bit, just to give it a wee bit extra more kick. And we'll add more water, mix all that up and put it back through the grinder for a second time to get a nice smooth finish. There we go, we've added more water, we've mixed it all up and we've let it sit for five minutes and now we're going to put it back through the grinder. Make them into burgers. Hey guys, so we've got our mixture minced through the grinder, and all we're going to do now is weigh them up into nice sized portions, and then we'll get them pressed out with the burger press and into burgers. So we'll just grab a good handful and we'll start weighing them out. We weigh our burgers at 120 grams, that gives you a good quarter pounder burger, a good size, no too big. So we'll make them into a kind of ball shape first and then we'll get them all pressed out. So a couple there just to show you, weigh them up to size and then 
I'll crack on doing the rest and then we'll show you them getting made into burgers. So here we have it guys, there's all our burgers weighed up into 120 gram balls. What we're going to do now is use our burger press. If you're looking to do stuff at home guys, go on to Scobies Direct. This is a great website, you don't need to be in the trade. You can buy all the tools of the trade. Um, this burger press will set you back about 45, 50 quid, but it will last you a lifetime. It's a four inch press. You can also buy the burger disc to go with it, again, four inch. And if you want to dabble into making all your own burgers and patties, it's an excellent bit of kit, it'll be well worth the money. So, <clears throat> we'll show you how it works with a couple, and then I'll do the rest. I think we got roughly about 30, 35 burgers out of that lot there, so. So just for the purpose of showing you how we do this, we get our papers, line them up, and then sit with our bowl of burger meat on top of it. And then get another pile of papers and just literally sit on top, get a wee squeeze. Easy as that. And then with our burger press, we just simply put it over the top, hold down tight and push hard, a couple of squeezes, and then push down the spring loaded clip and that's it. Job done. And it gives you a lovely wee ridge on the burgers, I like that in my burgers. It takes a lot longer to hand press your burgers with one of these rather than the machines you get, but unless you're pumping out thousands and thousands of burgers, I much prefer to do it with that, it looks a lot better and all handmade. Well guys, for our sausages, we've minced our trim once, we've got our Ruskin seasoning all weighed up, and we've got our stuffing machine, our link machine, all ready to go. So I'm going to add the Ruskin seasoning, give it a mix up, add our water, and then we'll put it through the grinder one more time, and then we'll fill it into the sausage skins and then get it tied up into nice jumbo sausages. So, hold the fort. As for rusk seasoning and water all added, it's a nice soft consistency and we're going to put it back through the grinder now. That's us, got our mixture in our machine. We'll get the lid on and get it put through into the sausage skins. There we go, we've got our mix up to the top, we're using 28 skins, that's for kind of jumbo size skins. Use the, the hand link, Dave Rose of Rad we make, and we'll just fill these out, nice and thick sausages. They look delicious. And we'll get these tied into nice jumbo size links. Sausages, call them whatever you want. <coughs> Six and a half, seven pounds a mixture. By the time you add your rusk and your seasoning, that'll fill out. There you go, that's it finished. So that's about half a skin, half a length of skins. Because they're nice and thick, you get plenty in them. So we'll just got a wee bit of water on them. And we'll start tying them into nice, big, thick sausages. Just like so. Again, this is something if you're trying it yourself, just practice makes perfect. Make a loop, get a wee twist, bring one into the middle, a wee squeeze in the top, over, through, and a wee loop again. We'll maybe make a wee video on how to tie sausages later on, and that way we can do it in more detail and slow it down and show you exactly what to do. Especially if you're making your own, these are great wee tips to pick up. There we go, how about that? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So we'll get this machine all stripped down and washed, and then we're moving on to our pies. Sorry guys, I've jumped ahead of myself. I got coat seven a customer there come through and start it batting into the pies. Right, so to bring you up to speed, we've well, minced for trim twice, we've added some rust, some seasoning and some gravy mix. 
We've put some hot water in it and we've gave it a right good stir. And it's looking like slop. But I'll tell you, that is the absolute bollocks. That's the way you want it. Looks disgusting, tastes absolutely amazing. So we'll fill out with pie shells and then we'll put a wee puff lids on it and that's us up to date with our pies. So there's my pies all filled out, the lids are on, and they are in the oven as we speak. And I'll show you them once they come out of the oven, they look delicious. Venison pies ready for the customer. Here we go guys, how about that, straight out of the oven. Absolutely beautiful. Zoom in on that bad boy sizzling away there. Here we have it guys, one deer broken down into burgers. Pies and sausages. All done at Alexander's Family Butchers here in Darvo. Don't forget to subscribe guys. If you like what you see, click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And get notif notified of any upcoming videos. And like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Pinterest. Looking good. I'm for one of them right now. Hey, I'm off. See you later.